Hello. I'm Captain Vile. Welcome back to Goofy Practice Sorcery. Mm, excuse me. I'm sorry. Drinking root beer right now. That's my beverage. Uh, anyway, Goofy Practice Sorcery, it's called that because every time I read my character's dialogue, I read it in Goofy's voice. I have to say that every time in case people are like, hey, why is it called Goofy's dialogue? Or Goofy's sorcery, Goofy didn't hear, moron. Alright, uh, where should we go? I don't think that gave it. I mean, that gave us some stuff. The horse follow the main road. Ah. Uh, Alright. I think this go. This out. Go this way. Yeah, sure. Go up top. Near the top. You follow the road past the grand house. A side road appears on the left. Move on. That's a jail. That's a jail. Which is the first jail. You snuck out. Anyway. As you press on the road, you notice huts either side are getting smaller. The roadway is now bustling. Dwarves and other fellow small... I don't know, small fellows. Sorry. It seems the incompetuous look... It seems from the incompetuous look... You're receiving from the inhabitants of this sub hamlet are not kindly disposed toward human sized outsiders. Ugh, tall people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get mugged. You drop down to your knees in order to appear less threatening, but it, uh yeah, I, 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 I would assume. But from the looks you're getting now, this is considered even more rude. You get back to your feet, red-faced. You reach the middle of the dwarf ghetto, a small square with general store off to one side. Further up the street, you see a small crowd gathered around two scuffling creatures. It's it's a dog fight. <clears throat> or the crowd. Yep, it's a, they're making goblins fight. I don't know that one's foot. Wait, hang on. I think that's like a... That's like a free-legged race. Um, anyway. You push away through the small crowd. One in the center. Two tiny creatures are grappling fiercely at each other. One is Pixie, the other is Sprite. The onlookers are quite fascinated with some cheering Pixie and some Sprite. I guess that's the Pixie since the wings. Anyway. Uh, you appear... You appear to have just got the end of the fight. The Sprite looks almost exhausted. Uh, place a bet. Or help Sprite? Place a bet, and then help. Uh, you look about to find someone to place and wager with, but there isn't time. The Sprite goes for the pixie with a tiny arm lock. The pixie duck spins around with a flying high kick and knocks the Sprite reeling backwards across the dirt. Good lord. Over a hop, a skip, and a jump, the pixie is sitting on the fallen Sprite's chest with two fingers curled up its nostrils. <laughs> it squeaks. The other creature make a tiny yelping noise. Yes. Presumably a yes. The crowd cheers and debts are settled up. Eventually the crowd disperses. Oh. <laughs> Damn it. Okay, whatever. Dwarf town. I just realized where I am. Oh. I'm gonna rewind so I The apparently word of my shenanigans have spread. <laughs> I don't know who that was. I haven't done it in a while. But I, I, yeah, there's a lot of reading in this game, so I have a drink with me. And when the... Unless I know when I'm done and have begun drinking. Anyway. You duck your head to squeeze through the door of the dwarf store. The proprietor is a stocky type of advanced years who peers at you for a pair of bottle glass spectacles balanced in a long, gnarly nose. You're not a dwarf, he observes with uncanny accuracy as you enter. I want to look around. Yep. There's the goofy voice. The dwarf shrugs. Then look away. If you've got enough room to turn that big empty head of yours. Okay, thanks for that, punk. Potion of mystery, honeycomb is beeswax, small vial of dust, selection of gauntlets. Provisions, I don't need provisions. Selection of gauntlets. Uh, you notice two kinds of gauntlets in the sale in the shop chain of mail ones and leather ones. Five gold pieces for either. The dwarf remarks helpfully. 
chain mail so hard to make, but that is easy to come by. There seems to be nothing else to distinguish between them, since you have only one pair of hands. It seems a uh, little use in buying more than one uh, chain mail. I'm gonna buy the chain mail. Uh, anyway, you hand over five gold pieces and place a chainmail gauntlet onto your wrist. You suddenly feel more skillful and persistent in your sword arm. Oh, sweet. But is it a sensation and illusion? You cannot be sure. The dwarf points at the violent dust. You should continue to mine on that. Your marks? No one else has. Violent dust, eh? Undo the stopper. Okay, uh, you lift violent dust from its place on the shelf and turn it over in your hand. It sparkles a little in the light. I think that's mud. Uh, what color is it? Shake it. Shake the violet grains, move around on more side, catching the light. Definitely not ordinary dust, but what is it? Undo the stopper. Hang up. I don't know if you guys heard that, but I just did the I did my root beer. The cap, I guess. Move the stopper, but the dwarf reacts with lightning speed. Don't! And he exclaims. It will spill everywhere. I have to clean it up. Make sure you buy it free. Go ahead. Serve you. Honeycomb wax, like, make your weapon sharper, so I'm good. Let's do a business with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. I wonder if he's gonna make me, like, pay extra if I kept being the kneeler. You follow the road up a gentle rise towards a building with a large domed roof. All the various alleyways seem to converge on it, and it's thronged with people. Thronged? What the hell? Okay, from here it seems there's no way around. Building. The road becomes narrower as the slum dwelling on the other side become more built up. Finally, it opens to a small plaza at the side of a large dome shaped building, some kind of sprawling covered market. Looking left and right, you see several other roads entering the building through different archways. A small group of serpent heads are just passing by. Uh, talk to them. Uh, uh, you stop one. <laughs> Greetings. You begin. What is this place? The serpent head looks towards you, unimpressed. It's the artists, Carter. They have half a roof over them. Oh, their paint runs and they complain. Nothing worse than a complaining artist. The second creature. Remark the second creature. Gorse. Sounds worthless. You reply. One of the head serpents, a female, Makes a harming noise, making fun of my son's little. <laughs> <laughs> making fun of my son's lisp, would you? Whoops! <laughs> it, it seems we're annoying every species this episode. Uh, she asks with one hooked fin, slaps you in the head. The rest of the group turn up their nostrils and march inside. Oops! Go around the market, uh, go in the market, let's buy it, see if there's anything of value here. The market has a maze of alleys, every inch of its space is being used for trade with shops, stalls, and piles of goods set out on crates and barrels. Hawkers bellow their wares, trying to shut, shout down the next. People are in all manner of strange creatures, mill about, quite lost, but very few seem to be actually buying anything. Very few, mm, excuse me, seem to, excuse me, sorry root beer. Actually, buying anything. If you're wondering what brand, it's uh, A&W. I prefer Barks, but was, you can only buy A&W. Goddamn Monopoly, I say. Barks reign supreme in restaurants, however. Every time you order root beer, or go to a like McDonald's, and get a fountain soda, there's Barks. It's the best. Anyway, enough about root beer politics. You lose yourself browsing the stands. Most car most sell carpets, but some also have offer incense burners, lanterns, and pottery. I could use a lantern, honestly. Can't see buy out any uh, blacksmith for food stalls or any other. Nope. Okay. You move on the market, elbowing your way between shoppers and hawkers to stand below an enormous glass dome. Through the hubbub of passers-by, you spot the exit across the hall. Noise rolls like thunder across the roof of the market. Uh, 
on the market. I want to go into a store. Fire burning. Fire master. That's an interesting title. The fire master's face is a patchwork of scars and scabs. He smiles a ghastly smile. It doesn't seem like he's very good at his job if he has injuries related to like fire, since you're meant to be a master of fire, buddy. Uh, Hello there. He groans. I hope you're interested in fires. White, green, and blue fire. Ooh, I want a green fire. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, by side in a row, like uh, flowers in a window box. They are quite beautiful and most hypnotic in the way they move. Yeah, fire's awesome. I love fire. Uh, of course. What are they for? Yep. Yeah. Different things, he replies. Maybe for relaxing. Maybe for making the ladies fall in love. What? How does fire do that? Unless you, like, burn your competition alive. Sounds fucking... Oh, there's nothing warm. I don't tell too many of those. My favorite, though, is inside. He glances menacingly at the door. <laughs> Show me. <laughs> he gestures you inside. Be my guest. In center of Fire Master's hut, a fierce fire is blazing away, threatening to engulf the entire room, but the flame is giving off remarkably little heat. You're not even breaking sweat standing close to it. Go closer. Uh, you take a few steps closer from here and notice at the very uh, heart of the fire there's a wooden chest. The fire reminds you of the one in the great grate of the larger vein that house you explored earlier. Look at the chest. The chest is closed. You cannot see what's inside. But it's clearly not burning despite the made of, being made of wood. Uh, cast a spell. Is there like a... What's, what's it? Tell, correct? Read minds, yeah. What's this guy thinking? You place a scorch upon your head and cast a spell. There are no minds inside the hut to probe, but you find the fire master spots easily enough. Will this traveler fall into my trap? He's thinking, but it seems he's hoping you to try and enter the flames. I can always rewind. I want to see what happens. I need something to. Uh, fine, what's in it? Morning faster appears. Go for the chest. I want to see what happens. Okay, lost health. Thief. I can have shame. Virgin Glogi pulls. Did he just... Oh, it was... Ah, okay. That's a stupid trap. Why would you do that to me? Jerk. Okay, so don't touch it. Sit back. Collecting the congregation. Uh, configuration to erupt into swelling heat at any moment, but it does not burn steadily and unchangingly as if requiring no fuel at all. It's definitely a magical flame. Let's look. Uh, leave. <laughs> Very impressive. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what's about has my fur in the random house? Okay. Very much an odds and clear hoping of one plus worse. I visited a house here in Kare where a fire burned in a hearth without heat. One of yours? Perhaps. I'm not the only fire master in Kare. I am the best. Grand house, was it? <laughs> yes. Ah. House of Lord Dita, I imagine. You trespassed there if you went in. He went blind, you know. So it's for a seventh noble of Kare. He lives a beggar now. Uh, let's go back to Northgate. Because he seems to know some stuff about. Tell me something. Yep. I need you to I need to pass through the north gate. Can you help? The fire master shrugs. Not many you do. Not if I've heard of. I know about the spell or I need to find the nobles. Yep. I need to find the nobles, you tell them. Of course. Maybe I can convince them to let me through. Yep. The nobles. No worlds are all but this abandoned. There's no council anymore. There's an empty building and some guards. Of course. Yep. What happened to them? No one knows how it started. There's those who say some of them tried to kill Sanas, the first noble. Others say he uh, just thought they were trying. But now they're gone. Hidden. I told you. Blind Cheetah, for instance. Is there no... In, ah, sorry. There's there no other way to find the spell lines? Yep. Probably. Our eyes full of gods. Ask the god of malice. A little priest near. Ask the other one. The fat one. Yeah, the god of, uh, whatever he's god of. Uh, you have much a chance of getting something from powers if you get a noble to talk. Seeing as most nobles have got their tongues cut, let 
Uh, at least God stay in one place and fall in arms. Hey, buy a fire, aren't you? I'll buy a fire, alright? Crikey. I want a, a blue one. Or a green, I mean. Green, green, green fire. That's my brand. Eight gold pieces, the man says. From the look of you, I'd say you want a flame that burns in pure danger. A little box from the bag by its feet. I the light when you open it. Catch on anything dangerous nearby. If danger can be. But never threaten. Clean away. Sure. We're out of money, but I mean, it's pretty rad. Hey, we'll run. It will not burn hot, bright, or long. Yeah, okay, cool. Two new clues. All the clues have been updated. Just gonna take a quick stick of root beer. I love that <laughs> noise. That's true. That's nice. A fight has broken out in the corner of the market. It's quickly settled by a score of passers by. Anything else? Art Studio. Sign above says find yourself here. Nothing was strange. I can do. Mm. The artist, the far end. Let's go here. You walk to the very end of the market. On your left, a man grabs your sleeve. You want to buy a carpet? He asks. The finest carpet is signed with backlands, made from real moth. What? Shake off the man's grip. Oh. I know I want. I want to see what he has. Maybe they're magic carpets. Make them fly. Endless uh, carpet shop. Very good carpet, the man shows you. How large you want? Size of bed? Size of room? Size of house garden? I'll give you the same price. Jack's the carpet show you. Uh, cast a spell. Feeling this guy's doing something weird. Sense danger. Uh, you cast a spell. A calm voice en enters your mind. Speaks slow and clearly in contrast to the bustling carpet seller. It tells you this man's up to no good and you try to leave as quick as possible. You cannot see the danger. It's hard to believe disbelieve the voice. Attack the man! Attack him! Okay, fine. Our. No, we got something. We got something. There's something we can do. There's more to this carpet shop. I mean, we. Uh. What the hell would we need Yob for? Yeah. Tell? Yeah, sure. Good mind. All right. You step on the clamp. Cloth cap, uh, he's thinking about a pile of carpets building up by the door. If he just shows you a few more, you'll be trapped. Uh, okay. So, it's a trap shop. Or the shop is a trap. I have no magical items, god damn it. Ha, huh, that's not a good idea. I'm in the shop as well. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. Nope, can't do that. Attack the man! <laughs> okay, I'm leaving. Actually, right. well, we're done. Let's get out of the hell out of here. Alright. Well, that is the artist, artist's quarter. Let's get the hell out of it. Got some... You turn around. That's a spell. Uh, why can't I get out of the artist quarter? It's right there. Okay, how? Uh, HUD? Dud? Oh, that's Dud. I wanted how. How? Safe passage. Let's get the hell out of here. Leave the market. <coughs> Excuse me. Take my daylight there. Outside the market. Finally! In the episode. Okay, sweet. Drink your water. Alright. Sorry for kind of the abrupt ending. Whatever. Thank you for watching. Good file.